bait and switch. Bait and switch. <laughs> Hand, oh, no, you get a handful of nothing. <laughs> All right, now, in case you haven't figured out, I'm hanging out with my friends up here. All my donkey burgers. Anyway, I gotta try to wrestle me up one of these and carry up all my gold. Cause I'm gonna go up in those hills and go prospecting. That's right. Ooh, I like that one. He's a pretty one. And then along the way, I'm gonna teach you some geology, son. Yeah, this one right here. Come on now. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come on, let's go. Ooh, look at this. Come all right, I got Cassie here. She works at the general store here in Oatman. So you stop by, you better see her. You got any words to tell the people out there, Cassie? Open rocks. Open rocks, and they got gold rocks too. So you better get up here. Hey, so come on, let's go. You see that? You see that? <laughs> I see it. See this nice looking dike? What is that? Well, you better know. Everybody knows what that is. That's a Gosson, son. Ooh, these are really good. So what am I going to do? Well, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to take some samples. Now, if you see a Gosson like this, you got to sample it. Now, keep in mind that a lot of the gold has been leached out of this thing. So you're not going to get a lot of gold values, but the deeper you go, the better it's going to get. Ooh, so all you have to do is find a little bit of gold in this guy. And you know down deeper, ooh, that's right, you're going to hit the mother load. Just like they did out in Vulture City, Arizona, son. Same thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So... I'm gonna go on the other side of the hill because if I got a dike sticking out here, I might have one on the other side. So look at this. And just look, it just crumbles. Ooh. And that's why you need a jeweler's loop, son. So you can in, in there and inspect it. Look at that. I got a little copper standing in there too. Iron oxide copper gold deposit. So alright, I'm gonna take some of these samples and I'll run up over the hill. And we'll keep on heading out and seeing what else we can find. Woo, doggy! Now, if you're out here in the desert, you better be careful. Why? That's right, because there's snakes out here. Just like this one right. I got you. Ah! <laughs> what are you doing out here, you silly man? All right, I know. I know. Stop fooling, right? All right, I'm going to get on over there, and then we're going to go look at some more stuff. Because I know that's what you want to see, right? So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Mm, that's right, so come on. Let's go. I got me some burrows. <laughs> Let's go get them. Come get some, boy. I see you. You think you can get away, don't you? Boy, I got two and a baby. Now that don't surprise me none. There's wild burrows everywhere out here. All right, let's take a look around. Look at that, I got, I got blowouts all over the place. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah. And you can see where the ground is all white. A lot of the hydrothermal alteration going on here. A lot of leaching going on here. There's some volcanic rock right there, see that? See that basalt? Yeah. And I got another blowout right over here. All right, what's this? I want to show you something real quick. Look across the way there, you see that? What is that? Those are volcanic plugs, or necks, same thing. The rest of the center cones obviously weathered away. And you see that black one over there, basalt? See that feeder dike coming right off the side? Yeah. And then you can see there's a volcanic neck or plug, same thing. And it's made out of what? Rhyolite, because it's a light color. And then the one next to it is basalt, because it's darker. Yeah! Woo! 
Oh, look, this place is old. You know what that is? Yeah, hey, you better know. That's a log cabin syrup can, son. Woo. Now this one's not even on any map. I just happened to be wandering out in the middle of nowhere and I stumbled upon some old diggings. Don't look like it was very profitable because the old timer stopped. But I'm gonna look at it, you know why? Because it might be profitable for me. And that's what you should do too. All right, look at this. I got this huge dike running along the hill. And you see where it was exposed? Oh yeah. You see all that manganese oxide on the outside? Can't even really tell what it is. Then you get down in here where it hasn't been weathered so much. Ooh, and you can see the mineralization in there. See all that mineralization? And if you get a good look at this, you'll see what? Sulfides in the mix, son. That's why it's always important to look for these outcroppings. You'll have quartz outcroppings and rhyolitic outcroppings. So you gotta look at them, especially where old timers have been digging. Now I already saw sulfides in the mix. I already broke a chunk off and used my jewelers loop. And there's sulfides all through there. And I could tell too, just by looking at some of this rock that it's sulfide. You there's can... a good example right there, see that? So the red hematite, iron oxide. Then you got the yellows, where the sulfur's oxidizing out. That's a dead giveaway right there, that's sulfides. You break it open, it'll smell like sulfur. And that's like I told you, sometimes gold rides in sulfides, right? And this is what you should do too, is look for these little prospect pits that aren't in any maps. You go out and you prospect, and you look around, you put them on your maps, you get samples. And it's important, why? Because if you happen to stumble upon what? Bonanza type vein structure, and the epithermal, woo wee, you can retire. That's right, son of Jim. Remember, low sulfidation, not high sulfidation. I told you that. I'm gonna check his high grade, low grade piles. They're all over the place here. Now I'm gonna pull samples from that, and then I'm gonna sample across the vein, like I told you. Remember I told you that? He said, you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Ooh, you better, so come on. Let's go. Look at all that beautiful red in there. All right, do you know what that is? You probably don't, so I'll tell you, son. But the next one, you better know. Ooh, that's brecciated tough. That's right. It's what happens when a volcano explodes, ejecting a whole bunch of ash flow, pyroclastic flow. And it's flowing really fast, it's got chunks of rock in it. See how angular they are? And then it lays down on top of this, which is kind of a bedrock. It's like saprolite. Anyway, and then it cements. And it had a whole bunch of iron in there too. <laughs> now I don't know if there's any gold in there, but I want you to see this. I'm gonna take a sample. And you're gonna help me. You hear me, boy? That's beautiful looking material. Look at all that hematite in there. <laughs> yeah. Almost looks like cinnabar. I'll mark it on the map because I got stuff to see and I got places to go. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? You better know. So come on, let's go. Ooh, what the heck is that? What is that? <gasps> you see this? It's a boat out in the middle of the desert. That way, in case of floods again, I'll be ready. <clears throat> Feels pretty stable. They're using it as a plug. Don't want to get too close, see that? Ooh, that looks like it hurt too. It fell in it. It's a small shaft, maybe about 80 foot. Most of the collar's all tore up though and rotten. I can see why they did that now, can't you? Now, I want to teach you some geology, so put your thinking caps on. Now in this particular area, they were mining gold. That's it, nothing else. No secondaries, gold and calcite. And that's always juicy if you're asking me. And what was it traveling in? These two little monkeys right here, see that? All right, now this one is called andesite. It's andesite porphyry. The reason why they call it that is because you got these large crystals, phenocrysts growing in there. So they call it andesite porphyry. What else? Well, the other side of the vein material is made up of this monker right here. I know it don't look like much, but that little monker right there is called quartz monzonite. It's in the granite family, just has less quartz in it. Now, in between the two is brecciated andesite and this guy right here. 
calcite and quartz. You can always tell the difference because quartz obviously looks like quartz crystals and calcite looks like what? It looks like somebody just lumped up a bunch of sugar, powdered sugar and threw it together. And the calcite usually replaces the quartz. Anyway, the gold's traveling in this monka right here. And I'm gonna show you some more examples, so come on, let's go. Ah. Oh, I was wondering where the trailer went. Now I know. All right, now, take a look down here. Cause no one not hopping down there. It's not worth it. All right, now on one side, I got andesite. You see that ugly looking green material? And then I got that reddish material. That's quartz monzonite. And then right in the middle, you see what I'm seeing? Bands of calcite. You see that? It's on both sides and it's running north to south. It's got a trend that runs north to south. Anyway, the gold is in that. <laughs> That's in case anybody's down there. <laughs> I know. All right, now come here, look at this. I want to show you something. And yeah, it's very important. Now take a look at this. I don't advocate getting close to these collars. This is a collar. That's a shaft, vertical shaft. Drops down maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 feet. Now, you can see the hanging bolts down there. You see the hanging bolts, how they built this? And in one of my videos, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? In case you wanna drop your own shaft. Why am I showing you this? Well, I've got a whole bunch of shafts in the area. I got four, maybe five shafts and a whole bunch of little pits. And you're thinking, Jeff, why the heck did they dig so many shafts? Was there one vein running this way? No, silly boy. There's a whole bunch of parallel veins running what? North to south. And they knew that. So all they did was they were scratching the dirt trying to find one. Scratching the dirt trying to find one. And then what they'd do, they'd sink the shaft down here. And then they'd start drifting along those veins to try to see if they got rich. Obviously they didn't. <laughs> there's a whole lot I gotta show you. But anyway, there's another thing I'm gonna show you. It's over here and I'm gonna show you why it's so dangerous. All right, now come here, look at this. Now I know you're thinking, Jeff, that don't look like nothing of anything. Oh, this right here will send you to an early grave. Now, this is a drift mine. What they've done is they've dug down through the different layers of stratum and they're trying to find that thin layer of gold, just like in Slim's mine. Same thing. See all the rocks they had to dig in? There's no supports, no ladder, no nothing. It's just in this soft conglomerate gravel, this alluvium fan that we're standing on. And it goes down about a hundred foot, making me leery standing this close. There's no collar, no nothing. And you drive up over this in your motorcycle, last thing you ever do, and it's happened before out here. So I got one over here and I got one over there. That tells me there's placer gold down there. But I'm not going down there, son. It's not worth it. But I want you to see what drift mines look like. They usually don't have any type of framework. You can't really spot them. And sometimes the mine dumps around them are real tiny. They don't look like nothing because they've eroded away. But the holes are still there, <laughs> and it's gonna hurt real bad. All right, see this? What am I standing on? You better know. It's a big, fat monker of a vein, a coarse vein. Of course, there's calcite mixed in with it. And it runs what? North and south. And there's a whole bunch of these veins in the area. And there's a lot of parallel veins. That's very common. You find one vein, you're gonna find a whole bunch nearby. And there's a reason for that, and I'll go over that later. And what do you got on each side? See this? That's right. That's that nasty looking andesite porphyry. It's a volcanic and it's extrusive. All right, now what do you got on this side? You've got what? Quartz monzonite on the other. Good combination. And you got this fissure filled vein structure right in the middle. And we're gonna go see what's inside of it because I have a feeling this thing gets really deep and really rich. I better have every ounce of that gold. So you know what I'm gonna say? So come on, let's go! See this monkey right here? That's right, it's a shaft. And there's hardly anything protecting it. You fall in that, you're not coming out. Now what were they doing? Let me explain the reasoning here. They got on the very end of the outcropping. They went down, come up underneath, why? Because all this stuff is barren up here, son. There ain't a lick of mineralization in it. But when you get deeper, you're gonna find mineralization. That's why I tell people when they find these huge outcroppings, even though they're barren on top, most of the minerals have leached out. Get up underneath it, you just might find a bonanza. All right, we're gonna get on down the inside there, but I'm not going this way, son, because it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt real bad. <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, nothing. <laughs> I feel like you caught Cornelius. All right, now get down here, take a look at this. See all these little veinlets in here? And stringers? Okay, you get a lot of them, it's called what? Stockworks. It's when they just scatter throughout the whole rock. Now this is a fissure filled vein system. This used to be a whole bunch of fractures in this host rock. And then it got filled up with what? All this quartz when it was in liquid form. And it solidified. And you can see it's all leached of any minerals it's got. But I'll take you down inside and show you something different. I ain't going in there. I just checked it out and guess what? That's right. A whole bunch of rattlesnakes in there. Ooh, you gotta be careful. I'll tell you what, that's another thing I gotta bring up. Is these portals, the first 20 feet, most dangerous. Why? Because that's where these critters hang out. They can get some sun, they can get some shade. Sun, shade. I didn't think they'd be out this soon because it's still cold. Surprise! Ooh, look at all those cans. Look at this, got some rhyolite over here, see it? Look at this. Ah. Beautiful looking rhyolite right there, you see that? You see that? Of course, rhyolite's what? It's an extrusive from what? Granite, that's right, it came up real fast, it's fine grain. Fine gold in it sometimes. And sulfides, that's right. See that? That's andesite. And what is andesite? It's an intermediate, it's not felsic, like rhyolite. It's intermediate. It's extrusive as well. Came up real fast, cooled quickly, fine grained. Now, look at this, what's this? Looks like rhyolite to me. You can have sulfides and gold in this stuff. It's from granite. Granite's intrusive. Cools inside the earth. This stuff comes up fast, so it's fine grain. It's felsic, which means it's got what? A lot of feldspar, a lot of silica in it. Come on now, you know this stuff. This is simple. And intermediates, like your andesite, and your mafix, like your basalt. Mafic meaning what? You better know this, because class is in session. Mafic meaning magnesium and iron, son. Come on now, stop playing. All right, and then of course you got ultra mafix at the very other end of the scale. Ah, oh, andesite, its parent rock is what? You better know this one. Ooh, it's diorite, son. And sometimes you have the two mixed together, granite and diorite. They call it granite diorite. Getting back to andesite, it's volcanic extrusive. Now it can come in all host of different colors. This one's green. I found a lot of gold in andesite that's got green in it. Then what's that behind me? You see that? You see it? That's a whole bunch of rhyolite poking up out of there. See that? That's what rhyolite looks like. And yeah, it comes in different colors too. Ooh, you know what that is? That's right, that's black sand in the wash. And just oodles and oodles of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I see something you're gonna wanna see. That's right. Come take a look at this, boy. Look at this. Ooh, I bet you haven't seen one of these in a long time. Oh, ho, ho. look at that imperial type steam engine. You see that? There's a piston right there, you see that? And there's a piston right over there. And what they use this for? Come on, son, you know what they use it for. See the sieve wheel up there? That's where they kept all the steam right there. Inside that huge accumulator tank. See that? Still has the sieve wheel up on top. But of course, you know, BLM got up here. Take a look at this. See that? Property of the US government. Yeah! Cop! Look across the way. What do you see, son? That's right, a stamp mill. I'm gonna go over there and we're gonna have some more geology. And I got some important information to share with you. So we're gonna head on over there. Ooh, I can't wait to see. Hey, you know what I'm gonna say? So come on, let's go! <laughs> Ooh. You see what I see over there, son? Look at that. That's a stamp mill, in case you guys don't know. Ooh, but you better know. All right, let's go take a look at it, because I'm surprised it's out here. Most of them are gone. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? So come on, let's go! <laughs> Ooh, look at this! Wow! Now, this one sits on private property, and I know the owner, so don't get excited, son. But I wanted you to see this. Why? Because for you out there that know what stamp mills are, you've probably never seen one like this. Come here, look at this. 
Now, instead of having the traditional stamps like you're used to, it's only got one big stamp in the middle. You see that? You got the mortar down here, the big bowl. And then you've got one cam up above. So most of y'all are used to seeing banks of five, and that's how they normally are. But this one, and of course this one's been locked up, you can see where you got your, this is the mortar, there's the bowl down there, and it just pounds the heck out of it. And then eventually it sloshes over, and then you'd have your what? Your copper sheets right here with your mercury on it, so you can collect your gold. And of course, how does the ore get in there? You better know. Look in the back, son. See that automatic feeder in the back? All right, you see this? Ore sitting in the back of this ore chute right here. You see that? And then right here, you got your, your gear mechanism. And then down here is the feeder trough and the plate that feeds to the back that goes into the very back of the stamp mill. Now, the way it works is every time this stamp goes up and down, it hits what? This little guy right here. This little fork, see that? And the fork goes up and down, up and down. Every time this stamp goes up and down. And as it does so, what? This whole mechanism on this T-bar is connected to this guy right here. And it advances that gear one notch every time that stamp goes up and down. So this goes up and down, chunk, chunk, chunk. It brings this wheel up right here because there's a lock right here, you see that? So it moves this wheel, chunk, 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 chunk. Chunk. As it does so, it turns this. Chunk, 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 chunk. As it does so, the ore is sitting inside of there. Chunk, 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 chunk. And then what happens? The ore is sitting in here, comes through this little feeder. Chunk, chunk. This whole plate's rotating, remember now, because it's connected to this. And it comes out. Chunk, 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 chunk. And down inside it goes, son of Jim. They get crushed. A chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk. Yeah! All right, now, what are we gonna do now? Well, I'm gonna take you up around where the mines are right here. There's a little town here too, believe it or not. And I got a whole bunch of other information I gotta tell you. So you better put your thinking caps on. So you know what I'm gonna say, Mr. Stan Mill? He better. So come on, let's go! <laughs> that must have been the town side. Look at this, son. See that? You know what that is? That's quartz monzonite. A whole bunch of it here. Ah, look at all these buildings here. Or what was left of them. Look at that. Everywhere, just tons and tons of wood. Look at that. You got quartz monzonite in the area too. Look at that. Just buildings everywhere. See that? Uh, look at that, son. Look at all these old cars that are buried out here. Look at that. They use them as a berm to help keep the water from flooding in. I've seen it done before. See that? Whole bunch of them here. Man, they must... I wonder what they look like under all this dirt. See that? <laughs> yeah, that's an incline, but it's all filled in. Ooh, it looks kind of modern too. You see the plywood? That looks like roofing material. Looks like somebody's working this monker. Now, real quick, why were they working here? This is an unusual deposit and I wanted you to see this. Look, see that? That's decomposing bedrock. They call that saprolite. See it? What's this? Laterite. This is a laterite deposit. And these can be extremely rich. These are like the ones in Australia. And if you look over here, you can see what? This thing is just gobs and gobs of iron. See that? Look at that. Now I know why they were mining the heck out of this area because the gold is locked up in this ladder, right? And it's really easy to get out. And you can get some really nice looking gold in this stuff. So what they do? They sunk an incline, son. They had the same dip as this, this vein. It has a north-south strike to it. Ooh, and this looks really modern too. You can see by the way that they cut these timbers and notched them. 
Yeah, this is all modern right here. This is really nice. Ooh, okay, so what else did I want to say? Well, <laughs> you probably thought I forgot about it, didn't you? But I got a whole list of patrons I got to name off. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. Well, you better hold on because I couldn't do none of this without him. And that's the truth. So hold on while I whip this out. All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? I got Randy Cisco. Oh, Cisco. Oh, Pancho. I got Tommy Robertson. Jacqueline Molinox. Molinox? God, I'm pronouncing that right. Kirk Olsen, like the Olsen twins. Eric Kenny. Clarisme. Sean Toomey. Hunter Hayward, Charles Allen, Brendan Reese, Jeff Simmons, John Nielsen, Meg Soldner, Chris Lasky, Clifford McShane, i.e. McShane, Andy Watson, Bill Burday, Chris Wildner, Chris Mortison, Bobby Hill from King of the Hill, Jason Sogolo, Requery, Mark Botcher, Justin Fisher, Jim Smith, George Amadea, like Rock Me Amadeus. And Daniel Friend, thank you so much for upping your pledge. I really appreciate that. Flash in the Pan Production, I like that. Ralph Rotes, Gary McBride, Gregory Sun and Shine, I like the way that sounds. Jennifer Davis, Jason Christopher, two first names. Greg Benson, Aaron Adalaski, Jonathan Estep, Wayne Hostetler, James Linfers, Pete and Terry Rinsenhausen, <laughs> Margaret Gibson, Chris Kufler? Kuffler? Edward S. Deloney. That ain't no baloney. Mike Puckett. I once knew a man named Mike Puckett. And Jerry Casey. Woo, man, that's a mouthful. Me and Slim want to give y'all a big cowboy yeehaw and shout out for helping us keep the dream alive. Because we couldn't do none of this without you. And that's the truth. So you ready? Maestro, a little music, please. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love doing that. But I don't think the people that live down there like that too much, huh? <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. Now, I'm going to get on up here and show you some more of this ladder I deposition. And I got some more information for you. So you know what I'm going to say, don't you? You better. So come on. Let's go. I can smell it. <laughs> Ooh, there you are, you little rascal. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Oh man, I can just taste it. All right, look at this. Now, right above me, I know it's hard to tell, but I've got cap rock up there, which is andesite. And then down below here, decomposing bedrock, which is saprolite. And then in between, I got the laterite. Remember the laterite deposition? Look at that, see that? All that black iron in there? Oh, nah. I got some more information for you real quick. For you premium patrons out there. That's right, I'm talking to you. We got another Arizona gold mining adventure tour just for you. Now, March is booked up right now, but April, the sign-up sheet is up now. So if you want to go to that page and sign up, you better hurry. There's only 10 spots, and they go really fast. Especially you seen what they pulled out last time, which was what? 2.25 ounces of gold. Ooh, that's a lot of nuggets. Also, don't forget, we're giving away that metal detector, the Gold Bug 2 or the White's GMT at the end of the month, so don't forget that. Now, for those of you out there that don't know what the heck this crazy man's talking about, or you saw the last video of all that beautiful, juicy gold that we found, and you want to get involved too, well, you got to sign up as a premium patron, son. And the way you do that is, at the end of the video, you're going to see a little icon that looks like... That! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Gotcha, you, you little sucker! So all you're gonna do is you're gonna click on it, is make a $10 donation. That's it! And you're in like Flynn! And then you can come out on the claims that are set aside just for premium patrons, and you'll be entered into the giveaways that we have every month. Ooh, nothing could be better than that, I'll tell you what. So you better hurry fast, because they're going like hotcakes. Now, I know you all want to know where that gold came from. In the last video, Where to Find Gold, Geology Class 101. So I'm going to tell you, a lot of you got it right, but it was coming from, drum roll please, that's right, the limonite. And the giveaway should have been what? The wire gold. You can find lots of wire gold in limonite. Secondary enrichment, especially super gene. Why? Because the gold has actually been broken down into ionic form, put into solution, and then redeposited. So come on, follow me up here because I got some more stuff I want to tell you before I get on out of here. So you know what I'm going to say. You better. Look at that. So come on. Let's go. Tell you what. Who needs a gym? Just be a gold miner. 
Ooh, isn't that nice? You don't see those every day, do you? Oh, I tell you what, this needs to be in a museum. All right, so gold mining tours in April. They're going to be what? On the 13th, 14th, 15th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for all you premium patrons out there. And like I said, don't forget, we'll be giving away that gold bug too or watch GMT. Now, if you're real good, we might just give away a Mind Lab GPZ 4500 or Garrett ATX. That's right, if you're good, so you better be good. And I'll give you announcements when that's gonna happen. So, anyway, I just wanted you to see all this stuff. I know it's a long video, but I had a lot to cover. And I wanted you to see it all. Because you don't see this stuff anymore, and I wanted to give you some geology, and yeah, I'll give you more geology classes in the future, so you just better hang tight. It's been one heck of a day, huh? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to get on out of here, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, you better rate, share, and subscribe, Sonny Jim, and of course, always leave me and Slim a comment, because we always like to hear what you got to say. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams with Who You Better Know, Son, with AskJeffWilliams.com, saying you want gold nuggets, and you want them now, well, sign up for a tour, son, and I'll show you exactly how. Take care, everybody.